Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about photogrammetry, Remake 2 and why this is a good thing to use. But more so we're going to be talking about the specifics behind how photogrammetry actually works, the entire process, try to help people understand the subject matter as it's currently a term being thrown around with very little comprehension of what it actually means. I've covered videos on the scans Resident Evil 7 used for photogrammetry as well as various other videos discussing the topic, but this one is a bit different. This time around I've actually done a lot of research into the specific subject, studied a wide variety of different applications, uses, techniques, videos and many more things. I learned quite a lot of intriguing things during this process which has given me a much better perception than I had previously. I hope you enjoy today's video and after this one you'll be able to talk about photogrammetry from a more educated and informed perspective as well as understand how the industry uses it, how it was used in RE7, as I will use examples from that game specifically, and how it may be utilised in the most long awaited, mysterious, fan enthralled, enigmatic, surreal video game project ever anticipated by Capcom fans, Umbrella Corps 2. So Resident Evil 2's remake will probably use photogrammetry, jokes aside. By the way, this isn't going to be some two hour explanation. Photogrammetry simplified is the process of taking real images of objects or individuals and turning them into 3D data that can be rendered in game. These in game renders will use the images as a basis, but they aren't just scanned into some kind of machine press a button, wait 15 minutes while Jeff makes you a coffee and... That reminds me, Jeff, it's been... It's been three hours, Jeff. The fuck's my coffee, Jeff? Anyway, it's actually a bit more of a complicated process than one might think. Like I said, no magic buttons. There are a lot of quirks as well and issues with the technology. So let's start from step one. The initial step to photo Grammetry is of course taking some photos, it's in the name. These are going to be mandatory as they will be used for the reference points later to create an actual render. You'll need all sorts of angles to be covered and all of these have to be very close up and highly detailed. Lighting is also very important to consider as shadows and from the opposite end of the spectrum too much light might cause issues with the actual camera lens which will cause the render to come out quite badly. High tier companies like Capcom though for example that utilise this technology will either have access to their own in house studio which I do think I remember them saying they built one but I'm not 100% on that but if they don't they'll just outsource it to some other studio for perfect lighting and picture quality combined. I also came to understand how most studios render actual 3D real individuals. Instead of taking one photo at a time, they set up a multitude of cameras in many different angles already preset all on different little wires in a 360 degree angle around the subject and they take the photos in a very synchronized fashion. This is to maximize the quality of the image set as the individual having their photo taken will obviously change their facial expressions and body language and maybe the position of their head slightly from second to second. So if all of the cameras take the photo at the same time and are already preset around, you'll get the exact same body language, expressions, etc. again, which means there'll be no issues when turning it into an actual render, or at least it'll be as optimal as possible. So now for the next part, once we've got all those photos, we talk about how to turn them into an actual render. How do we get all those photos that we just took into Resident Evil? Now hypothetically, if we're Capcom, Let's say we have 80 pictures of this random person and we're gonna decide to turn this into some raging madman in the game who tries to get into a sub romance plot with Claire. Well these images taken from a full 360 degree radius around the individual will be uploaded into programs such as Photoscan. So Photoscan can take the pictures you have provided and using very intuitive software 
will begin to read the images and try to create a bunch of data that roughly translates the object being scanned, determining where each point is in 3D. The nose from different angles, the eyes from different angles, it'll try to use all of these things to try and make a 3D render as fluid as possible. Now I know that might have sounded like a bunch of technical jargon and everyone's like, how is this the dummies intro? Try to imagine it like this. Imagine taking like literally 800 photos of somebody in a circle around them perfectly so you had it from like every single angle perfectly. Now going onto an image viewer and scrolling through it by like just holding the arrow key, it would almost look like a video as if you were circling around that person. This is what the software is doing, it's circling around analyzing all the images and then creating 3D data based on all of that algorithm. Now the 20 or so photos that show the front of the face for example will have the eyes in them, the 20 or so from the back won't, the sides will have some of the ears and some of the side of the nose and you can see some of the other side of the nose from like the front right of the face and the software is really smart and this allows it to create a good base. This isn't to say it's perfect however. We don't just get to scan someone in like this render and load them straight into game. Once you have loaded your base, it will have a lot of missing points in them, a lot. Holes between the points. The software will not be able to properly and fully map out the object or individual in question down to say the atom. At this point you'll have to do a dense cloud build and this will have to be rendered and what this does is it kind of creates a better base. It takes all the nodes if you would that have been created in 3D and tries to blend them together allowing it to have like a mesh that's much better to work with. This isn't perfect but it does do a really good job at it. Now you can make textures from the rendered mesh as well because of course cameras can take coloured images, who thought of that? If they're made from scratch, they'll be extremely refined, but if they are based on the scan, they will still be heavily modified anyway. The base texture scan isn't the best. After exporting the mesh from the program photo scan, you can now load the finished 3D result into a program like ZBrush, giving you the capability to now fully modify the model in any way shape or form you see fit. You can change any of the proportions, resize and rotate everything, add geometry to things, remove geometry from things. There's so many things that can be customized that you could hypothetically take a scan of a person and modify them into a truck. That's literally how customizable it is. The purpose of using Photoscan and Photogrammetry is to create a good base to use in programs like Maya or other similar graphical editing programs, bypassing the time requirement it would take to make these very realistic looking individuals and objects which would take the artist an extremely large amount of time to create but it also means for all intents and purposes for Remake 2 if they do use photogrammetry for the main cast Leon and Claire can look completely normal like the Claire and Leon we know Chris was kind of a screw up I'm not sure what they were doing there because they can really heavily customize things but Instead of them just getting some actors that look similar and they could do that anyway, the artist could heavily modify any of the individuals that have been scanned and make them look like Santa Claus if they wanted to. So I'm sure they've learned from their mistakes with Chris. I mean there was so much fan backlash over that. They even made some tweet statements about it. And I'm sure there was some hidden hints in those interviews. I've already covered that in my previous videos where they were like, oh, as the fans change and technologies evolve and blah, 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 the future RE games might not be specifically looking like RE7, but we're going to continue with this horror theme. But I thought that was a little bit of a, you know, we're taking in fan feedback. They mentioned that in there. And I do think that they're going to take that in, especially for the Remake 2 project. I'm just trying to emphasize the point that Chris was a big screw up. Everyone kind of knows it. I'm not saying that there's people who don't like him and, you know, that's fine if you like him, but it was a big controversy and I'm sure that Capcom knows that the people who obviously like the new Chris probably won't care how Leon and Claire look, 
but the old school fans will, so they'll probably just try to appease everybody. So the reason this is good for Resident Evil 2's remake is the fact that it's going to allow a lot of the assets, objects and individuals to be built much quicker. And again, like the Jack example in RE7, this is going to allow them to do all sorts of additional cool effects and I'm already imagining all the zombie go upon that we're probably going to see because I'm seeing Jack as like a little tech demo of a test to see what they could do and they're probably going to further enhance this in Remake 2. I've also disproven the myth that you can only take a scanned image of a facial actor and that's all you've got to work with so there's a lot of things you've learned here. As one additional fact if you guys want to learn something interesting about photogrammetry, it seems like the hair does not render very well at all with the technique. It's not just random amateurs that are having this problem exactly, it's also Capcom themselves as all this imagery I've been showing you is from the C-Deck presentation that Famitsu covered, I'll leave a link to that in the description for anyone interested and you can see the hair's pretty abysmal hair before they touched it up. So the entire point of photogeometric technology is that you can create very high quality models equal to or better than hand designed elements at a much faster development rate. Which means with all of these assets being put out so quickly but also being high quality, they can spend more time on all of the other important factors and atmosphere. It's also a very cost efficient way of creating a lot of high quality models. This basically speeds up the entire process and it's one of the best technological innovations to be made, especially for the gaming industry. It's still in an evolving stage however, and only time will tell to see how far it really goes. If you did enjoy the video anyway guys, please leave a like and a subscribe, I put a lot of effort into this and if for some reason you are completely and totally insane, I do have a Patreon if you want to go and donate to that, any donations would be greatly appreciated and would support me to make much better content as well as live streaming in the future. I also have a Twitter if you want to follow that and a discord server if you want to come join. I leave links to all of these things in the description if you want to go check them out, but for now I just hope you're having a beautiful day, take it easy, and peace.